Hi! Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I'm working on a new quilt. This one right here. And while I was working on it, it occurred to me that I have developed a lot of hints over my many years of teaching on sewing seams. And I would like to share them with you today. So, stick around and I'll show you my hints. first problem we always encounter is you take a stitch and all of that fabric just go right down in the hole and you got a big mess. So what a lot of people will do is they'll have this little starter piece. That's where they start their seam. And then they just sew on here, right onto here, and Wonderful. Doesn't go down. Another hint is this. People are used to just sewing down here like this, okay? But look at this. These two don't come together at the end. That's going to make a problem when you go to sew across with your next row. So what I do is this, needle in, that's important so it stays where it's supposed to. Then I come down here and I match these. Then I pull on it and that's called easing. And you know my feeling is if you can put a name to it, it's fine. And I keep going. Nice and even. Then I'm ready for the next one. I set it up and just chain it right on like this. And let me show you that. This is several pieces. I have chained piece together. I just sewed down here, stuck this one up next to it, kept sewing, stuck this one up next to it, kept sewing, and then I'll cut them apart later. And that's called chain piecing. Saves on time, saves on thread, saves on your nerves. Sometimes you can't avoid having your seams go in the direction you're sewing. They're going to be in the opposite direction of what you're sewing. And you know perfectly well, like I do, that a lot of times those little seams flip over. That's because they're getting caught on this lip as they go under there. That little, that little groove is catching them and flipping them over. Well, let's cover up that groove and make it smooth. All we do is take a little tape, any kind of tape, put it over top of that, and we have a nice smooth area. Now look at this. We will get this sewn against the seams. Turn it over. Not one seam flipped over. Isn't that cool? Okay, remember what we did before where I matched these two right here and then I pulled. Ooh, this is bias and this is bias. When you are sewing bias to bias, don't stretch. In fact, help it. Help it through like this. Okay? And I'm just pushing just a little bit so that there's absolutely no tug on it. Now the next problem, and I see this all the time in my classes, is when people get to the end of this right here, their machine has a tendency to carry it off the end like this. That will get you in more trouble to do that. Now let me show you how to take care of that. Here's what we do. Going along here, sewing along real nice. We're getting to the end now. And you want to be aware that you're at a tricky point. 
So you can take something here, like I have this little squizzers, which, by the way, is one of my favorite tools. And I'm going to fold it out here like this. Or some of you can manage just to push with your fingers over here. But just be aware of that corner so you come off nice and clean and the same width as all the way up here. That will go so far in making your piecing easier. Let's take a closer look at these right here. Here's the one that your sewing machine, here's one where the sewing machine has dragged it off the corner. And see how much narrower this is than this? Believe me, that's going to get you in trouble. You want it to look like this, where the width between here and here is the same throughout the whole thing. Okay. We do a lot of quilting these days with long strips and then we cut off squares, okay? And then put all of those together to make this. So much easier than what we used to do. So, a little few hints on sewing strips together. Now I've just sewn this one together right here and I'm ready to put the third strip on. So I come along I get that third strip and I'm ready to sew. You know what? Let's check this first because if you've reached the state of cocky and you're feeling really, you know, good about it and you just stick that on, <laughs> it's on the wrong side. It's much better to find this out before you sew it than afterwards. So, Put this over here. Now it's the way it's lined up the way it should be. Okay, now we're going to take this and come to the sewing machine with me, and I'll give you a few hints on sewing this together. Okay, we're going to sew some strips together, and I have them all lined up here. I have an even feed foot on there, so it should go through nice and even. But you know what? If, if you have two different, slightly different weights of fabric or different finishes, different fabrics of any kind, they will still go together a little bit differently. So what I do is I line everything up and I have it so it's nice and even and then I sit back here and I tug on it a little bit and then I take off. I haven't moved my finger and thumb, so I know that if it's still, if it hasn't bunched up here or anything, it is nice and even the way I set it up. And here we go again. Boy, I'll just get that thing ripping along there. Okay, and by the way, it looks like I'm off, but that's because the camera is over here. It's at an angle. And then I'll go right through to the end of the strip. Now don't get upset when they don't come out even because they're not going to. This is the width of the fabric that's been cut this way. And they're all a little different. Okay. I'm going to sew this on right here. Now a lot of people will do this. Instead of sewing in the same direction, they'll start down here at the other end and sew well, here, you get what I mean. They will sew from the other end up this way. So if this one has been pulling out of shape a little bit, this one will pull out of shape a little bit this way and compensate. This is very important when you're sewing like five or six strips together. It can, they can go really out of whack. Okay?
Now take a look at what you have to work with. If this seam doesn't match this seam, look at that, it doesn't matter because there's no point at which you have colors meeting that are going to stand out and go whoops. So this is really, this seam here is really the only one that you have to worry about matching. Now we're going to try to match this one over here because, you know, what the heck, it's nicer. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over now. And here's my little trick. Come to the sewing machine with me here. Okay, let's use that little starter thing there. And now I've set my quarter, scant quarter inch seams, so I'm going to start here. You notice I haven't matched anything, I haven't even pinned. That's because I'm going to match these blocks the same as I did when I was chaining the original blocks. I'm going to come down and my needle is in the fabric. I'm going to hold this right here. Like so, when I get to there, needle in the fabric. I'm going to take this right here. And it's a little off the machine, so I'm going to go ahead a little bit. And to put my finger right there, and I can feel that. And of course, I have my tape there, so it isn't going to take that seam and flip it over. All right, match the next one, and just keep going. I haven't had to stop to pin or anything. Get down to the end, match it up. And keep on going. Okay, now let's look at, see how I did. Whoops. All right. That's not the greatest little joining there. Now I got to tell you, if this were going to be uh, a quilt that was going to be used and, you know, just enjoyed, I'd let that go. I wouldn't fix that. That's not that bad. You know, you can't see that from a galloping horse. And that's uh, that's the quilter's mantra. If you can't see it from a galloping horse, it's okay. But let's say I wanted to put that up for judging. You know what? I would take that apart and redo it. And all you have to do is rip from here to here, futz that around, and I'd probably pin it at that point, and then sew from here to here. Nobody would ever know the difference. Okay, so that's the way you fix things. And by the way, I don't fix them until the quilt is ready for quilting. Because you can go back and take a look at that. And maybe you'll say, eh, it's okay, it's all right. Okay. Let's take a closer look at these seams that we tried to match up. Okay. This one, the seam is pressed this way. This one, the seam is pressed this way. And we're going to try to match this right here. So, let's take this like this right here. Now, try to understand, because quite frankly, you don't want to be ripping things out all the time. Ugh. So, we're going to try to get perfect matches. And with very little practice, you can do that. But you need to, it helps to understand what's going on. Your presser foot, when it comes along here and meets this thing right here, this bulk, it really does not want to go over it, and so it pushes it ahead. You may have put it, uh, snug that up, but when that presser foot comes along and pushes it ahead, it separates those two, and you have a slight mismatch. Now, let's talk about the other way. If you were coming this way towards your seam, your bulk is here. But look, down here, you've got some bulk. And when the presser foot pushes this ahead, that bulk down there stops it. And so you have a perfect, match, a perfect match seam here because it actually pushes it together. Let's go back to here. Here it has pushed it apart because you have nothing here to stop it from going ahead. 
So what you want to do when you have a situation like this, your seam is going this way, push it up a little bit farther, not up on top, but really, really snug that in good and proper so it stays there when that presser foot comes over. Okay? Let's not be ripping out all the time. Let's get it matched the first time. Okay? Those are some really good hints on piecing. Putting your pieces together and making your seams behave. This, by the way, is going to be a gorgeous quilt, isn't it? Simple rail fence. And again, a little bit about color. I took my color from this fabric here. I love that fabric. And so the manufacturer says all those colors go together. So good. That's what I'm going to use. And that's what I put together. And I love it. Happy piecing. See you later. Bye.